All right, so welcome to the Taiga training. Um, so what Taiga is, is it's an open source project management tool. So in Fedora, we have an instance that we pay the Taiga team to run for us. It's at teams.fedoraproject.org. But there's also uh, a free public instance at tree.taiga.io that you can use. So the main feature, uh, the way I mostly use Taiga, I suspect most people this is the case, is uh, really use it for the Kanban board. So if you're not familiar with Kanban, um, the sort of basic idea is that you have cards that represent work and they flow through different stages. Um, and so, for example, you might have, um, you know, a backlog and then, uh, you know, if you're writing blog posts, you might have the writing column, the editing column and the published column. And so each card would be a blog post and you move it from one column to the other as you go. Uh, the idea there is that you have um, very easy transparency into what work is being worked on by whom, and you can sort of see the flow. Uh, the idea is that you basically pull each card forward as you have capacity. So it's basically that everything is getting done as soon as possible. So you're not really like scheduling the work uh, in the Kanban model, but you know that as soon as somebody has capacity, they're pulling the next card forward. And so things are happening as fast as they're going to happen. Um, one of the features that often gets used in a Kanban model is a work in progress limit. So for certain columns, you might have, uh, you know, a maximum of two cards. And the idea there is so that you don't end up pulling a bunch of stuff into in progress. And then you're not actually uh, doing any of that work because it's all stuck. Um, for myself, I tend to not enforce automatically the work in prog like progress limits the way Taiga lets you set a, a maximum value. But I definitely try and pay attention to, all right, I've got five things that say they're in progress. That's probably not true at this point. Some of them are probably waiting um, or they're ready for test or something like that. Um, there's also the concept of swim lanes, which can be a way to divide work uh, among larger uh, heterogeneous teams where you maybe you have like development and testing um, so you can move the card between the swim lanes and then for each swim lane you can have different work in progress limits for the same column and it's basically just a way to to represent you know not necessarily at a per person level although you can do it that way but maybe at a per function level what work is in progress and set limits that way so we're going to look at the fedora magazine's kanban board as sort of an example of some of the basic usage. Uh, so you can see there are uh, different columns representing states. And so in this case, the article spec state is for an approved article that has, you know, maybe a rough outline defined, but uh, isn't actively being worked on. The card moves to in progress when the author is working on it. It goes into the review state when it's ready for an editor, editor to look at it, which point it moves into to edit. The editor works on it. When it's ready to publish, it gets queued. And then from there, it um, gets scheduled and so archived. Um, so on each card, there is uh, you know, a card description. This is, in this case, it's basically the title or the rough title of an article. Uh, and this should be a very... Um, you know, succinct but clear explanation of what the work is. So you wouldn't want to say put do stuff, but also you want it to be short enough to read so you don't want to describe the whole work to be done. Um, and then so within each card, there is an area for sort of a longer form description. Um, Taiga will let you do it in Markdown or in HTML. So you can you know put do things like lists and stuff like that. Um, and sort of describe the work more um, in more detail. Um, you can go down to the comments section and this, you can use this to communicate with people on the card. So, you know, you can add in a comment here and says, hey, are we ready for this article to yet? Yeah. Um, you can tag people using at and their uh, Fedora account name. Um, you can set due dates. 
um, with a calendar. And this can be helpful for, you know, for the magazine. It's used to sort of plan when articles will publish. Um, Taiga does not provide a sort of integrated calendar view, which would be really nice um, the way some other Kanban boards like Trello do. Uh, but it definitely helps to sort of, you know, set deadlines on things that have deadlines. Um, you can even create tasks. Um, and these are basically, um, you know, subcomponents of the user story. Um, it's, you know, there's not a hard and fast rule of when something is a user story versus a task, but basically, um, you know, for example, when we have Fedora Council face-to-face, -face, I'll usually, I'll have a card for that, and then I'll have four tasks underneath, you know, schedule it, prepare the agenda, um, do the Zodbot readout uh, after the fact, and then publish the community blog post. And so, all of those could be cards on their own, but since they're very tightly related to the overall concept of the Fedora Council face-to-face -face meeting, I choose to have them as tasks. Um, you can also use labels or tags um, in the magazine that's mostly used for the needs image tag, and that's just an indication to the editors that a featured image needs to be created on the Kanban board I use to keep my stuff organized. I have things tagged by, you know, if it's documentation or, uh, you know, process improvement, if it involves Bugzilla, if it involves uh, legal questions, things like that. And that's a sort of a nice visual way to, um, you know, I highlight things that are, you know, certain types of tasks because you might want to, um, you might want to, you know, break up and not do a whole bunch of super related tasks at once because you get kind of burnt out on it. Or you might say, oh, these are all related to documentation. I'll tackle these all at once because I'm already editing the documentation in that workflow. So I might as well do it all together. Um, so, you know, it's just very sort of a, a way to organize your work. Um, some teams find them helpful to use. Some don't really have enough different kind of work that it makes sense. Taiga also supports custom fields. Um, so you can do things like, for example, in the magazine, they set the preview URL, which is just the link in WordPress where the article will be. So it's really easy to get to the, the article from the card um, and a cover image designer and an editor. And so these are fields that describe, um, you know, who's going to do things. Um, I, al I also tend to use like a blocked by as in a URL. So um, you know, if I have a card that's blocked by something else, I, you know, especially if it's blocked by something external to the Taiga instance, like, um, you know, an internal service now ticket at Red Hat, I'll put that link in there just so that I know um, what it's blocked by and I can go back and check on it from time to time. Um, Taiga also supports a field called uh, story points, um, which is, I don't think very useful in an open source context generally, but if you're familiar with it in software development, it's basically the idea of measuring the size of work um, based on you know, some sort of criteria. Um, so basically the more story points you assign to um, a, a, a task, the more effort it takes or the, the larger the scope it is. Um, so you can assign users to a card, um, they have to be a member of a team. And when we, when we get into, you know, sort of how to administer a Taiga board, I'll talk about that. Um, but so you can see here, the Fedora magazine assigned an author, that's the person who's gonna work on the article. And then they also assigned an editor once it's ready to be picked up by an editor. Um, and that way it's just very clear who's supposed to be working on it. But they also have watchers and so the idea of a watcher is that they're not necessarily uh, acting on this card, but they need to be informed by it. So for the Fedora magazine, there's a group um, that's just all of the editors and they get added as watchers to the card when the card is created. So that way all the editors can see when a card moves through. And so they'll notice that the card has you know, gone into to edit. Um, they'll also see any comments that get made um, and so they'll know that, 
you know, oh, the author has a question or, you know, something gets stuck or whatever. Um, you can add as many watchers as you want. I generally would suggest not adding people unless it's, you know, already agreed to by the team of who will be the watcher um, because it's, it will generate email on basically every ticket activity. Uh, but, you know, if you have, you know, you might want to set yourself as a watcher on cards as they get added just so that you are aware of what's going on or, you know, if there's a team leader or, you know, several people who are sort of team leads, they might, might want to be watched. Um, as also people can add themselves as watchers. So if, you know, the team is working on something websites related and there's a few people who are interested in the websites part of that team's work, they can add themselves as a watcher and they can see what's going on. So it allows for some granularity uh, in what notifications you get, which is really important on an active board. So this board is one that I had used um, to basically track all the work uh, and particularly the backlog of stuff that I was working on, um, both Fedora facing and internal to Red Hat facing. Uh, but one of the things I've done is I've created epics for myself and these are sort of larger, you know, sets. Um, and so, you know, some teams, depending on their work, like a Fedora, a Fedora Linux release might be an epic. Um, so, you know, basically you assign the user story to this epic, and that's sort of the umbrella for all the things that might happen in that release. Uh, I'm working on a book right now, and the publisher has like four different milestones, four different uh, editorial review sort of checkpoints. And so, from that I have, um, uh, you know, each chapter is a user story. Each section in that chapter is a task under that user story. Uh, but then each milestone, so the, you know, three chapter review, the 50% milestone, 75% milestone, and the final content, they're each an epic. And so I can add uh, a user story to that epic and see, um, you sort of plan out which chapters I want to have done by which milestones. Um, and so, you know, like um, like the Kanban cards, the epics also have state. So, you know, by default, new, ready, in progress, ready for test, and done. Um, and so you can see, like, oh, the closed epics. So, you know, I've had epics for different sort of things I was working on, like Nest, or when we were working with Lenovo to get stuff done, things like that. And then I mark those as done. And then, you know, I have things that are in progress and you can see a progress bar of, you know, how many docs migration tasks, have, uh, user stories have been completed and how many are still outstanding. So I talked about swim lanes a little bit. Um, so this is sort of a swim lane in action. So what I've done in this example is I've set up a default swim lane of unassigned and then a swim lane for Alice and a swim lane for Bob with different work in progress uh, limits for each of those. And so, you know, as I move the card, I can go from the different swim lanes. Now, like I said, you probably won't, um, you know, use them to separate on people, but you might use it to separate on roles, especially in like a larger team. Um, you know, for most of the teams within Fedora, they're focused enough that swim lanes probably aren't going to be very helpful, uh, but, you know, they're there if you need them. And so when you uh, first log in, to teams.fedoraproject.org, you get um, basically a list of things that you're working on or watching and the projects that you um, are a member of. So uh, if you click on manage projects, it gives you a list, um, gives you opportunity to create a new project. Um, but you can go to, you know, whichever, uh, you can reorder how the projects appear. Um, and so that'll show up in this um, in this drop down menu as well. So if you want to set what view you get when you first um, click on a project, you go to your profile and click account settings and then go to set start pages. And so for each project that you're a member of, it allows you to pick which page you're going to start with. Um, so that's sort of a convenience. Uh, for the ones I actually interact with a lot, I tend to just set the Kanban as the start page because I don't actually really care about the timeline. I'm mostly using it as a Kanban board, so I want to go directly to that. 
Um, if you're working with a team that's also using it as an issue tracker or something else, you might want it to change to a different view. Uh, but that is based on, that is a per user customization. So I could change it for myself and not affect anyone else. So just because I have Fedora Magazine set to Kanban as my start page, that doesn't mean that everyone else will. Um, you know, somebody else would have to set it to Kanban for themselves. Uh, you can also customize your own um, notifications. So you can receive all notifications uh, via email on a board, even if you're not assigned as a watcher. Uh, by default, it's only if you're involved. And then you can also set no notifications, um, which means you don't get email notifications, but you can still, when you log in, uh, you'll see if the bell with the number if you have unread notifications. So it will show you what's going on, and then you can dismiss them if you're done with them. So this is the part where we talk about administering uh, a Taiga uh, project. So um, you can have different users. So you can see on this one, I only have one right now. Um, but the user has to be added to the team. Um, and that means that you have to, they have to log in before you can add them. The way the, the login system works is the account gets created in Taiga the first time somebody logs in with their Fedora account. So if they've never logged in before, you can't find them. Um, and confusingly, you can't add people to the team from the team view. You have to go into the settings. And from the settings, you go into members. And then you can click on add a new member. Um, and you can either add them if they show up. So you can search for them. Um, or you may have to just type in their email uh, associated with the Fedora account. Um, and if they've already if they've already logged into Taiga, then that email address will um, just automatically add them. Um, so I'll just add uh, Adam Shamalik just to show it. Um, so you can choose a role. So by default, there are different roles. Um, you, know, you probably, when you're doing this for a team at Fedora, want to customize those roles, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so you choose a role, and then you can invite the person. And if they're already on, they'll be added automatically. Um, and then to remove, a, you can make somebody an admin by to toggling the admin button. Um, and then, of course, you can change their role or you can remove them. Um, some, in some notes about access control. So all of the boards are going to be publicly visible, which means anybody who knows the URL can, can look at them, um, can get to them without logging in. Um, now, one thing with um, the permissions, if you want to make it so that anybody who's logged in can, for example, create a user story or comment on it, you actually go to the external user. And this very scary note that says, by external user, we mean any anonymous user not belonging to the Taiga platform, including search engines. Um, so it sounds very scary, you, you know, it sounds like, oh, I don't want to add permissions for that. Uh, but because of the, the authentication plugin we use, you this basically limits it to anyone with a Fedora account. Um, so unauth unauthenticated users can't actually do anything here. It's only, um, you know, it's basically external to the team, but still logging in with a Fedora account. So you can, for example, make it so that anyone can um, create an issue if you're using the issue tracker um, or you know anyone can uh, can comment on a user story and so that makes it you know so if the team that you're working with is using this to sort of interact with the rest of the fedora community you can make it so that the community can actually directly interact there um, you know i talked about roles so you know each of these roles is um, different, you can, for example, delete a role. Um, you can create a new role. And give them permissions. I think for most Fedora teams, you probably don't need too many roles. Um, you know, maybe like team member is probably enough. Um, and so you can remove some of the roles and rename them just to simplify it a little bit. Um, 
So like you, you might change people who are cool to people who are awesome. So you can easily rename them and things like that. Uh, so you go to like the project level, there's basically various fields that you can set. Um, you can set some of the default values. Um, the interesting thing here is the module. So you can add a Kanban board. Um, you can add epics. You can add issues. Um, you can add a wiki. Um, the issues are somewhat useful, probably, but most um, most teams will probably use uh, Pagger or another issue tracker, not the built-in one. Um, the interesting thing about issues in uh, Taiga is that you can actually promote them to user stories. Um, so at one point a couple of years ago, we were looking at changing the process for change proposals, where basically it would be to submit a change proposal, you open an issue, and then to process it, it would I would convert it to a user story and send it through the pipeline that way. Um, again, you can also add a wiki. I would suggest generally the existing Fedora project wiki is probably a better place if you need wiki space. Um, and you can also add uh, a built-in video conference system if you need to. Um, the attributes section is where most of the interesting things happens. Um, so you can set statuses for your epics and your user stories um, and for tasks and for you know issues as well. Um, I haven't bothered on most of the boards I work on changing the epic statuses just because you know it's fine. But the user stories are um, you know, this is where you want to focus making sure you have reasonable columns. Um, you know I showed the Fedora magazine Kanban board. They recently change some of the columns because it was sort of unclear. There was a, um, you know, what what does queued mean versus um, scheduled? And then there was an archived after that. And it, it felt like too many states and uh, it was, wasn't clear. So they basically got rid of, um, you know, the, the archived one and made the, um, you know, combined the three columns down into two. So it'd be a little more clear and understandable. Um, so for me, on the board I use, I have a new, which is basically a backlog of ideas that I haven't really necessarily fully fleshed out yet, but I don't want to lose track of. Ready is for things I could start working on today if I had time. Um, I have a blocked and waiting, and so that's usually, um, you know, it's depending on somebody else to do some work or, you know, some resource to become available. So I'll just put it there so it's very clear that it can progress as soon as the block is removed. Um, and I have in progress for things that are in progress, ready for test. I use that as sort of, um, you know, if I'm writing a blog post for Matthew Miller, for example, I'll move it to ready for test when, when I've given it to him and say, you know, please look this over. Um, if I'm submitting documentation or website changes, I'll put it in ready for test when I've you know, pushed the changes and then I'll move it to done once it um, you know once it actually builds and I verified that it you know looks the way it's supposed to done is you know obviously it's done um, and I keep for myself done and archive separately because I like to you know sort of batch up my done over a week or two and then um, you know when I have my one-on-one -on -one meetings with my manager I can tell them oh here's some things I've done um, that are recent and then when, but when something's archived it's hidden by default so it's not easy to see um, you can also of course set um, you know any status to be uh, archived or done um, and you can customize the colors you can customize the names um, the, the trick you want to make sure here is that you need to save so uh, each field you edit once and then save and then move to the next one and save. And so, um, just the way Taiga uh, the, on the back end handles uh, the changes to the configuration. So if you go to the Kanban options under the attributes, this is where you can set work in progress limits or create swim lanes. Um, and so basically the work in progress limit is um, you just set the number of user stories for that swim lane, so you can, or for that column. And so basically you could set it on a per swim lane and per column basis. 
So, you know, I might might not want to have any for new or ready or for blocked. Um, but, you know, in progress and ready for test, you might want to have a limit just so you're making sure that work actually flows all the way through to the end and you're not doing a bunch of like half started things. Um, you can also go to the tags to set the different um, you know, labels. So you can see you know, Bugzilla, Comblog, Conference, Council, all these different things that I just sort of use as a visual, as a sort of categorization to myself. Um, you know, it's not necessarily automatable or you, know, you don't really act upon it necessarily. It's just some, some more, to, more of a, a visual and you know, sort of mental cue. And of course, there's the custom fields. So you can see I created the block by one. It's a type URL. You can set different kinds of types um, for any of the custom fields. Um, again, you have to save each one. And so that's why we ended up not going with using Taiga as sort of the back end for the changes platform, because it would have required the user to you know click save on every field. And I think we ended up with something like 15 custom fields because we wanted it. Um, you know, we wanted it to be very parsable by a computer. So we had, you know, each field, you know, one field for a link, one field for a description. Um, and there was too high of a risk of somebody not clicking save on each field as they went and losing the data. Um, so I thought that would be a little user hostile. So that's one thing to be very careful of when you create custom fields is that if you get too many, you're going to increase your risk that somebody doesn't save it and then the data is lost. Um, you can also set severities and priorities. Um, I don't find them particularly useful for most open source projects um, just because the work tends to be sort of a, you know, as you're available sort of thing. Um, you can definitely use that to indicate, you know, if you're tracking certain like bug fix kind of work, um, that might be good to use those and that way if somebody says all right well i can work on one of these three cards oh this is the high priority one i should work on that first um, i think generally people have a pretty good sense of the priority of the work anyway so it just sort of adds an additional layer of um, administrative overhead to maintaining the, the taiga instance that you probably don't need so one of the the downsides of Taiga is that you can't just show a list of the of the uh, user stories um, sort of as a list and not on the board. The closest thing is that there is a timeline view, um, and this is the default when um, when you click on a project, um, and you can set that on a per project basis. Um, but it basically just shows the most recent activity. Now with the issues themselves, if you um, enable the issues module, I believe that is, um, you can get a list of issues. But um, Again, you know, I think most pro most teams probably won't be using the issues module um, necessarily in Taiga, um, although it may just be that they would if they knew it existed. 